This is Rob Kilmer. What does it mean to be a Republican or a Democrat at this point in America? That's what we're talking about this week on You Defend It. Welcome to You Defend It. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. As always, callers to the show will need to take a position, be able to defend it with an argument that is factual, not emotional. And if you can't make your point without insulting someone, you can't make your point on my show. My website is www.youdefendit.com. You can give me your comments on the show anytime. By Friday of each week, I will have the topic up for the next show. You can also visit my blog through the site, and you can read my posts and leave your own. You can always listen to my show live on streaming audio on www.wnbf.com. My show is then uploaded to youdefendit.com later on Saturdays. And you can listen to it from there if you missed it live. There is a debate suggestion section on my website. It is at the top of the home page. Leave me your thoughts on topics, debaters, and questions. Finally, with respect to callers, callers on my show will be treated with complete respect. For my part, I will ask questions that matter and give people the opportunity to answer. Okay. What does it mean to be a Republican or Democrat? My answer is simply nothing. It means as much as you let it mean. And I'll explain what I mean by that. In my view, at this point, and it, particularly as you watch the, uh, the health care reform debate slash fiasco uh, take place, I don't think there's much difference between the parties. I think the primary thing they have in common is that each will tell you what you want to hear so that they can get elected or stay in office. And that's not a... That's not an original thought for me. That's not a shocking revelation. I, we all know that. And I'll get to why, why I bring that up in a few minutes. But I don't think any of the things we've associated with the parties in the past are even true anymore. Strategic decisions are made all the time, which really dilute what the parties stood for to the point where it is just a matter of, of having more people in than the other side has for purposes of controlling the agenda, and that's about it. Why do Democrats support open government and transparency, transparency but support secret votes for unions? Well, because it helps them. That's why. They, uh, they, they won't allow... Uh, the same transparency in unions that they want everywhere else. They support uh, a system within the unions that prevents uh, people from really being able to express themselves so that uh, people, you know, you would know then who stood where on uh, union dues and things like that. I should say they support a certain amount of secrecy in unions. They are not willing to apply to the unions the same level of, of openness that they do, uh, that they pretend to want elsewhere. And on the health care issue, who would have thought before he was elected that Obama would cut a deal with the pharmaceuticals to not negotiate prices, and congressional Democrats would remain silent. Who would have ever thought that? And what's the Democratic position on this? I thought it was pretty clear before Obama was elected that they vehemently opposed that.
for that matter, on that issue, as far as the pharmaceuticals are concerned, amidst all the hysterical cries of socialism, what could be more anti-capitalism than the largest customer for a pharmaceutical product, that being the government, being actually prevented from getting the same bulk rate discount that you and I can get just by going to Sam's Club. Where are all the Republicans on this? Where's the outrage? Where are the unpredictable town hall meetings? Where's the organizing? I mean, where are the where are the hysterical Republicans confronting this affront to the very foundation of the free market where you actually put into law a provision that the largest customer is not allowed to even negotiate a bulk discount how does that square with with republicans free market philosophy it is complete hypocrisy as the democrats are with the unions as the democrats are with with the uh, with tolerating this deal by obama They want the pharmaceuticals on board for this. They don't want another round of Harry and Louise commercials, they, and they're not getting them. They want this to, to go through and take credit for it. So they're just giving up principle in the name of being able to say they got something done, even though the something has no relation to the principles it was supposed to have been predicated upon. You have Democrats elected in the South because they oppose abortion. You have Republicans elected in the Northeast because they support it. So what's the point? What makes you a Republican or a Democrat? The D? The R? What, what is it? I mean, to buy into the notion that there are huge differences between these parties, you have to you have to believe what you hear from them and you have to ignore what you see from them at the end of the day you had George Bush a conservative Republican increasing federal entitlements more than any president in 40 years with the prescription drug law Is he conservative? Does that sound conservative to you? With the consolidation of departments and the increase in uh, hiring with Homeland Security, he increased the federal workforce more than any president in history. Is he a conservative? Does that sound conservative to you? He doubled the deficit in eight years, a massive spending spree that didn't, doesn't even include on the way they calculated it at the time the cost of two wars is that does that sound conservative it's not just before an election he proposed amending the constitution to ban gay marriage just after the election he forgot he did it never once pursued it If you're a conservative Republican voter, you've been had. And they know it. They're vocal about it. Good for them. It's the way it should be. Obama was going to go after torture. He's not going to go after torture. I mean, we're in August here. We're eight months into it. He was a sitting senator. He knew all he needed to know, either before office or shortly after taking office, to pursue uh, the torture. Indictments against Americans for torture. He's not going to do that. And I'm not saying he should or he shouldn't. I'm saying he said he would. But he's not going to. He's not going to do that. He doesn't want the hassle. 
you know, there's a famous saying out there that after all is said and done, there's usually more said than done. And that has never been more true than in the context of elections. The only difference between what people say they're going to do and what they do is about 90%. We're going to take a break here in a minute. When we come back, we're going to talk about what this means and what it should mean for the public, in my opinion, in my view, how the public should view this merging of realities when it comes to what these parties actually do as opposed to what they say. We will be right back. You are listening to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer right here on News Radio 1290, WNBF, Binghamton. Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. We left off talking about the differences between the parties and whether there are any. I submit that at the end of the day, with respect to legislation that is passed and then legislation that is repealed, there's not much difference. And you have the parties sacrificing whatever they claim to be their principles all over the place in the name of keeping people in office or getting people in office. I referenced the Northeast, where the only surviving Republicans in the Northeast are uh, basically, they have almost universally uh, democratic views. Down the line on the issues. You had Senator uh, Jim Webb elected in Virginia. If I were to show you just his positions on the issues, you wouldn't know he was a Democrat. You would never in a million years think he was a Democrat. But he is. He's a pro-life, uh, pro-gun Democrat. Can you be a pro-life, pro-gun Democrat? Then what does it mean to be a Democrat? I really don't know. And it's the same with, with the Republicans. Moderate Republicans are Democrats. Moderate Democrats are Republicans. And more than at any other time, people who are in that middle... They're registering as neither Republican nor Democrat. They're registering as independents. More people are registering as independents now than are registering as Democrats or Republicans. Because it's pointless to register as anything but if you hold those views. So if both parties swap views in order to keep people in office. The question becomes, why do they do it? And the answer is simple. They, they, they do it because they know that to get elected or stay elected, they need to tell us what they want to hear. And to me, the flip side of this that is not discussed, and we're going to today, you have to think about what you want to hear. It has to be driven from this side, not that side. This side of the table, the public. If we already know that they react to what we want to hear, we are now in an age, we are now in an age where people are publishing their own books on a large scale. We are now in an age where people raise more money via the internet for campaigns than they do through the mail. It's not hard to get your voice heard now. 
collectively. You can get an organized message out there on behalf of hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people. You have to stop classifying yourself as a Democrat or a Republican. It is limiting and it serves no purpose anymore since there is no set in stone group of principles or values that applies to either party. They're scrambling based on the demographics in any part of the nation, any given part of the nation, to stay elected or get elected. They recruit people who will appeal to the public wherever they are, regardless of whether their values or positions are consistent with the parties. Chuck Schumer didn't go out there looking when the Democrats took over the Senate. He didn't. He was the head of the uh, Democratic Senate Campaign Committee. He didn't go out there looking, you know, with a questionnaire. Do you share these values? If so, please call. He polled on who was popular, and said, "You ought to be a Democrat." And by the way, what are your views? We had people elected in Colorado, uh, Democrats who weren't really Democrats traditionally. Rudy Giuliani, he's a Republican, pro-gay marriage, pro-gun control. Republican how? So, in an age where it is realistic to believe that the message or the feelings of the public can be conveyed, we need to start holding up our end on this side. If it's really based on people telling us what we want to hear, then they ought to know a little bit more about what we want to hear. And we can accomplish that. I'm trying to do it with my debates. I believe I've identified what people want to hear. They want to hear an honest debate. With no talking points, no sound bites, none of it. Last week, uh, we talked about health care reform. Two of the eight callers last week were emphatic that we need a greater emphasis on vitamins, supplements, and prevention. I've heard that almost nowhere. 25% of my callers, now granted, this isn't a, a large st statistical group to deal with. This isn't 200 out of 800. But nevertheless, two out of eight of my callers were passionate on that narrow point. That issue should be part of the debate. You know, when the first person called last week, I thought, eh, that's not really what we're after today. You know, thanks for calling. Let him make his point. I didn't think it was completely relevant, but... It was interesting. It was different than what I had heard, and it was a good call. And then somebody else called with it in the second half of the show. And I remarked last week, you know, wait a minute. It's, it's more than just interesting that somebody, now a second person, has called wanting to see this as part of health care reform. It's relevant now. If there are two out of my eight, then there are 200,000 or 2 million or 20 million people who, I mean, I didn't hear anybody calling after them saying, that's, that's ridiculous. And that certainly wasn't my reaction to them. It makes all the sense in the world. 
we have the means now to organize around that idea and make it known to the people who sit on the committees in the Senate and the House and impress upon them that we would vote for somebody who endorsed that idea, who included that idea that as part of health care reform. There are online petitions. You can, you can form an organization on the Internet for free, other than purchasing the domain name. You can send out mass emails. You can direct everybody in your organization to email a representative. The days of, of, of wringing your hands and saying, if only my voice could be heard, those days are over. If you're willing to put in the work. You know, I've said it before, democracy is not a spectator sport. You can certainly participate if you want. And I'm not trying to be Glenn Beck here and tell you that it's us against them and some nameless, faceless enemy that we surround them. It can be more civil than that. In fact, in my view, it has to be. Organize, get your point across. It's never been easier. Okay, we're going to take a break here at 8.30 for local news and be back after that. You are listening to You Defend It. With Rob Kilmer right here on News Radio 1290, WNBF, Binghamton. Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. All right, we left off talking about how easy it is now to get our elected representatives uh, to make them aware of what it is we want to hear. And this is a partial list of what I want to hear. There's only two items on it. And they're kind of broad. But this is what I want to hear. I want to hear that our foreign policy will be honestly debated and driven exclusively by what's best for America. That's what I want to hear. In any given situation, that's how they're going to handle it. No broad, you know, freedom is on the march or we're doing this as a policy worldwide because number one, it's not true, and number two, it doesn't work for us. I'll get to the phone calls in just a minute. The second thing that I want to hear is that our domestic policies will be honestly debated and driven exclusively by what's best for America. I realize that's kind of similar to number one, but it happens to be true. I just want a fair, truthful, honest, open debate. Nationally televised. Prime time. Where the issues of our time are debated. all I want. Okay. I'm going to go to the phones. Frank, you there? Frank, you there? Yes. Welcome to the show. There's something uh, up front for you, by the way. Okay, great. 
I, I could tell you a story on here, but it, it would give you a really big chuckle. I was in earlier of the week, and I said that, uh, I don't know if I should say this, did Rob Kilmer leave anything? No repercussions, please. But the girl said, who's Rob Kilmer? And I said, I'm the guy he talks to. <laughs> she says, oh, oh, okay, I know him. Uh, anyway, I took my vitamins today, and I don't need did, deductive. Did she say... Did you say you were Frank from Appalachian? And she yes, said, I did. I've never heard of you. No. As a, <laughs> as a matter of fact, when I go to garage sale, people say, are you the guy that talks? I'm serious. I mean, there must be something weird about my voice or whatever. It's informative. But Oh, sure. <clears throat> hey, I, I don't need the duct tape today. Well, that's uh, I, the best I, news I've had in a week. I, I, I agree with you on a lot of things. But, you know, you asked the question, where are the... I don't remember the, the exact word, hostile Republicans at the town meetings. I think hysterical. Hysterical. Well, they're the same place as the, some would term it, terrified liberals. They're both hiding. I think the townspeople are, don't support either party. I, I think they want freedom of choice between their doctor and themselves on health care, and they don't want mandatory government intervention. Well, what do you think of, uh, of the notion that the largest customer for prescription drugs, whether whether the government should be providing or buying prescription drugs, put that aside just for now, but yeah. just the, the concept that the largest purchaser in the world of prescription drugs is prevented by law from negotiating a bulk discount. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. And where, where are these free market, we're turning into a socialist, you know, country Republicans on that issue? And why are the Democrats tolerating it? Because they think it's it, they can get a deal done Wait, without those those hurtful commercials from Harry and Louise and, and the, you know, they think that they can avoid the, the lobbying effort by simply striking a deal with the pharmaceuticals. Yeah, you, you know, it, the logical plan to me would be to have a true bipartisan panel and fix, you know, the, the latest poll says 86% now of Americans rate their health plan as good or better. And by, by the way, a couple of weeks ago, one of the senior members of parliament brought his mother over the border because it was four months to get her test done. So she brought her over to the United States to get the test done. But in any event, fix the, the, the problems. I mean, there's a problem with insurance portability. There's tort reform. And I think there's possible means testing should be done of Medicare benefits. I'm not going to like that. You're not going to like that when you get old enough. But, you know, for people who can afford it, you know, they should kick in a little bit, I think. It, it's never going to happen. We're not going to have this under Pelosi or Reid. If you, if you look so far, we, we have no energy plan in place. You're not going to have that under Obama. You're not going to have that under the next Republican president. Well, you know, why are we increasing troop strength in Afghanistan? I mean, I, I don't know what the heck's going on. If, if it goes the way things are now, the Democrats are going to take a, a real pounding. The first, in the next election, the first you're going to see New Jersey with Corzine. That's this fall. And then there's somebody in Virginia also. Well, he's losing right now. I think both of them are going to lose. You know, and you're going to get the Republicans back in, and we're going to have the same, well, right. I, I what, can't use a bad term, but, you know, we're going to have the same trouble over and over again. This, nothing seems to be logical. Nobody works together. Nobody solves these things. It just keeps going on and on and on. They, 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 they keep saying that if you had done it my way, it, it would have worked. Or they, they, they hope the other side... You know, they they want the Rep the Democrats, the Republicans want the Democrats to own health care reform with the hopes that it'll, you know, that it'll go down in flames. They will. And it may. But, but you know, it, it, the other thing you hear is, well, we haven't plowed enough money into this yet. We've got to put more into it to save the situation. And people are just getting tired of it. No more bailouts. I mean, everybody's saying that. Enough, enough, enough. And when this economy rebounds, and this economy is always strong, is always rebounding, you're going to see hyperinflation. And then what's going to happen? People are going to be in deep trouble again. It's not a simple problem. And that is the biggest illusion of all. Everybody tells you on both sides, all you have to do is this. It's not a simple problem. There isn't a simple issue we face. There isn't a simple answer to anything. But both sides are primarily interested in power and you're never right. going to get a solution that way right they're interested in the next vote i for the life of me i cannot figure out the attraction for uh, uh for the religious right to the republican party i don't understand it at all i've never you know 
I, I'm a, I guess I'm a Rick Warren fan in that regard. I, I, I guess where, where are they going to turn to? They're not going to turn to the Democratic Party for sure. What have they ever gotten out of it? Did what they get a gay, have, gay marriage I, I, amendment? I no. I could say the same thing. What have the poor people ever gotten out of the Democratic Party? Well, there's... You know, that's, Rush Limbaugh like makes that argument, and there's, that's a decent argument. Thank you. Um, hey, why don't you run for something? Maybe I'll vote for you. I'm not running for anything. I'm running for my life at 9.01 every Saturday morning from my callers. We have better points to make than I do. No, I'm not running for anything. I don't, I don't know. It's not the way. My, my contribution will be these debates. And by the way, the reason they weren't up front before now, or yours wasn't up front, um, when that uh, person who was working here on their first day, apparently, uh, when you saw that person, I just got him yesterday. They just uh, were oh, yeah, no problem. edited, and uh, the holdup was getting a label on the actual DVDs. But the people who did it did an excellent job, and we're real happy with them. And now I, now I'm going on the attack on the media in America. I don't feel that it's unprovoked, <coughs> and know, I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to get somebody to hire my company to produce these debates once a month. I I did have a question. You said that the, the first one was a prototype and wouldn't be put on. What, right. are the, what are the chances of getting that put on the local educational TV station? I don't know. I haven't pursued it. Okay. Well, I suppose that's possible. There's a suggestion. Okay. Well, thanks for calling in. Okay. Have fun. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. You know, he's he's right. He's made a point a lot of people have made on here. There is no cooperation between the parties, and what we end up with is each one telling you what's wrong with the other party and secretly hoping, not so secretly in some cases, that the other party fails. So what are we left with? We're left with health care reform that will be a party-line vote, not necessarily because of difference in philosophy, but because there's a real advantage to not owning it. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have a, a debate where nobody talks about why it costs so much. We're going to have a debate where nobody discusses prevention. We're going to have a debate with everything but solutions. We're going to have town hall meetings with police. And we're going to call it free speech, which it is, but just because it's free speech doesn't make it productive. It makes it democratic. It makes it legal. It doesn't mean it's helpful. So, I mean, you tell me what's preferable. Solutions or organized resistance? I tend to lean towards solutions. All right. Lucas, you there? Yes, I am. Welcome to the show. Nice, and, clear and connection out, this week. Uh, pro problem with uh, the two parties cooperating with each other. Okay. Look at our government in Albany. By and large, the parties have been sort of hand in glove with each other most of the time, except when it comes to low power uh, struggles, because you've had a situation in this state where if you have an incumbent politician lose his office for whatever reason, doesn't matter if he's a Republican, doesn't matter if he's a Democrat. If, some, if somehow Albany comes up with a job for them, uh, right away. In other words, they, in other words, they, they protect each other. So you get a, you, the last thing you want is a collusion between the two parties, not with them cooperating with each other. Well, there's certainly a difference between collusion which implies uh, a, a joint effort to the detriment of the, uh, of the public and secret at that, and cooperation. I mean, I, I, I would disagree that there's much cooperation in Albany. Well, not, uh, well, I mean, the squabble they had over control of the Senate uh, the last couple months was, uh, well, that was, uh, that was a fight for power. Right. The thing is, is in day-to-day -day operations, if let's say, uh, let's say if Matt Ryan loses his uh, uh, 
a bid for re-election uh, in November. Mm -hmm. By and large, I'm very sure that he would get, get a job. And even if you had a Republican in uh, office in Albany instead of uh, Patterson, I, I, Matt Ryan would still get a jo job at some level in the state if he di didn't get some uh, job uh, uh, with the party. So in other words, these guys are, by and large, they've been protecting each other over time. Now that you have a squabble, you have a slight squabble where Republicans don't want to spend quite as much as the Democrats. But there really hasn't been that much difference between the two. It's basically two, two factions that echo each other. And I think what you, uh, this is what the real problem is: is by and large the parties, what they present to the public, is not who what they really are. That has been a big problem. I agree uh, with you. You know, like uh, you had Schumer's little project of recruiting. Democrats who are far more, cons uh, who at least sound like they're far more conservative than the a average, average Democrat we've gotten used to in, in the Beltway. But the thing is, is look, look at uh, Gillibrand. Uh, uh, while she was representing a rural district in uh, New York, she was all opposed to any form of gun control. Now that she's a senator all, uh, and represent. All of a sudden, she is saying, oh, well, I, I, I'll go along with this gun control, that gun control, and that. In other words, all of a sudden, you have a switching of the issue. So in a lot of cases, you have a lot of people who are run saying they are conservative, and when they get in office, they are proving that they are not conservative. But and when you look at the actual here. issues and the votes that come up, I mean, when is the last time that the Congress voted on a gun control matter or an abortion matter? Okay, I do know that we we have these fights all the time about where they stand on those issues. Now, obviously, with with respect to the Senate, it has some relevance with respect to a vote on a Supreme Court nominee. But that's it. We make this uh, we make this an enormous issue, or these enormous issues: gun control and abortion. They never vote. On, they never vote on them. Actually, they have. Well, they occasionally I mean, they do. But see, when's the last time there was a major vote? When's the last time there was? Gun control legislation. I'm not talking about the, the semi allowing the ban on semi automatic weapons. I'm talking about a new restriction on handguns. When's the last time that was even brought up? There was such a, a proposal. Actually, there was a lot. Right after the Democrats took control of the Senate back in 2001, they had a number of votes that, in the end, it was symbolic because they knew the Republicans had a majority in the House and that, you know, the issue wasn't even going to be brought up there. Right. You had the Democrats in the Senate pushing, uh, they voted on a number of gun control measures, but they voted on them knowing full well that these would not be enacted in law because the Republicans in the House had no intention of even uh, dealing with the issue. Right. So when's the last time was, we, we faced the, the reality of a new gun law? Ten well, years ago? Twenty years ago? We had a saw saw weapon day. On a federal level, that was ninety four. On state levels, you have had issue issues on the concealed carry thing going through all the time. Well, sure, on the state level, but as far as the federal government is concerned, the assault weapons ban is the last thing we've really had. Mm -hmm. That was uh, fifteen years ago. Yeah, that was the one where uh, Maurice Finchie said he voted for it. Lucas it had this little provision where it would add. <laughs> 100,000 policemen and all that, and the measure that that in there actually caused a net reduction in the total number of police because all the municipalities that were getting the money were using it to cover the new hires that were replacing the retirees. I so the guys who were leaving the force, and uh, what happened is, is then they took the money that they used to give to the police and they put it to another thing, and when the federal money dried up, all of a sudden there wasn't money for new police, uh, replacing the policemen. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't usually make these kind of wild predictions, but today I'm going to. You are not a big Maurice Hinchy fan. Is that accurate? Nope. I'm also not a big uh, George W. Bush that's fan. That's accurate or that's not accurate? That you don't uh, like? That is very accurate. <laughs> I am not a fan of most of the ones in Congress of either party. Okay. But I'll let you know where I stand politically. I'm a member of the New York State Conservative Party, so as far as I'm com concerned, Republicans are almost as liberal as the Democrats. Are you a libertarian? No, I don't go, go along with their issue on drugs. Other okay. And I'm probably a lot more hawkish on defense than uh, the average libertarian is. I've never understood why every libertarian isn't a member of the Republican Party. I, 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 those I those interests seem to merge to me, other than the... 
Well, part of it is, is a lot of guys, a lot of folks that get into the libertarians, they are the drug issue, and that's probably the main reason why libertarians haven't really taken most of the conservative votes away from Republicans on the national level is because the libertarians have tied themselves in. They want to decriminalize all these drugs, and the thing is, is in countries where they have decriminalized these narcotics and all that, they have enormous social problems caused by drug addiction. More so than we have right here with alcohol? Well, uh, by and large, the problem with pro prohibition actually succeeded in reducing uh, alcohol consumption to about one-seventh one of what it was before and after prohibition. Now, the thing is, is you could say, well, that you had all that attendant violence. And, the and thing I'm, is, I'm not endorsing uh, was, legalization of drugs, by the way. I just... No, for that point out there. You can make, there are arguments you can make back and forth about, well, this, uh, not like with alcohol, and I'll, I'll be honest up front, I've never drank alcohol, so to me, if a prohibition was imposed on alcohol tomorrow, I would have no problem. The problem they had with prohibition is, is they enacted a law, and then law enforcement wasn't geared to dealing with it. In other words, you had situations where my father told me about how beer trucks would be coming, uh, heading for uh, New York City from Canada, would be going right through the streets, and the local police would simply direct traffic, you know, let them pass right through town, and didn't make enough to stop them, even knowing full well there was uh, booze in the trucks. And yet I do know that a lot of local people went, went down uh, for violations of the Volstead Act. So in other words, there was enforcement, but apparently... No one was re really prepared to deal with the organized criminal gangs that uh, developed in the transporting of uh, alcohol. Right, and thrived, by the way. Yeah. I think well, the, they the gained major thrived, power during that, that time. But it, but it did reduce uh, uh, dr uh, drunkenness and uh, alcohol-related problems enormously during the period of Prohibition because most people obeyed the law. You had a small minority of people that still went, went uh, they may not have drank as much as they did, but they would have to go to these secret parties and drink. And you had to, well, what happened is alcohol uh, consumption went down to one-seventh of what it was before Prohibition came in. And then when Prohibition was lifted in the 1930s, it went right back up to where it had been before. So you could argue that uh, you could say if you start legalizing marijuana and heroin and all that, you may end up with the sevenfold increase. And then all the health problems that simply come from smoking are going to be suddenly, all the pot smokers are going to wonder, why well, I'm getting lung cancer. Maybe it's because you have the same tires of nicotine in marijuana that you have in tobacco. Which, uh, i gotta, I got to end the call, but which would obviously raise the issue of why cigarettes are legal. Uh, but thanks very much for the call. Mm -hmm. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um... As far as Albany is concerned, I, it's hard for me to talk about Albany. I think it's hard for any New Yorker to talk about Albany. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break, and then uh, we'll come back. Uh, but I do think that at this point in time, the excuses for not having your voice heard by your elected representatives are dwindling. It's available to you if you want it and when you compare what might be with what we have I think you should want it we'll be right back Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. Only got about three or four minutes left in the show. So my point is this. We need to stop letting the people who are in office dictate the terms of the debate. They react to what they should react to in a democracy, which is what they perceive the public to want. 
Now, certainly, in some cases, they go out of their way to determine what the public wants. Both parties engage in their ad campaigns and their special interests also engage in their ad campaigns to influence the public. But the numbers don't lie. The independent vote determines who wins now, nationally. Don't limit yourself to what your party used to believe. I'm a Democrat. Democrats used to stand for a certain set of values. They don't anymore, I don't believe. The notion that, that Obama would come in and, and reach a deal with the pharmaceuticals not to negotiate lower prices, that is uh, what one of my favorite football players would refer to as an all-timer. That is an incredible turn of events, and he did it. Democrats anywhere but the Northeast, I shouldn't say that, uh, in the South and the Southwest, if you want to be elected to the Senate, you're going to probably have to be pro-life, anti-gun control. That's not the Democratic Party. It just isn't. There are fundamental philosophical differences that the parties used to have. And when you start to straddle those lines, you've made the characterization as either Republican or Democrat meaningless. And I think people find themselves believing certain things or wanting certain things because the Republicans are Democrats. You know, I mentioned last week, I mentioned about the callers last week and how two out of eight had said, you know, we need to focus more on prevention and vitamins and supplements. Were they Democrats? Republicans? Conservatives? Liberals? What? What viewpoint is that? I say none of the above. That is an observation made over time by people who think and care about an issue. That's the way it should be done. Forget the labeling. Forget the garbage. And get on with it. Take your own life and apply it. What you've learned, what you've seen. Don't adhere to something your own party doesn't even adhere to anymore. Figure out what's best for America in your eyes, in your view, and advocate. Thank you for listening to You Defend It, and you can hear the show on youdefendit.com. It will be uploaded later today. We will see you next week.